All right, everyone. So I'm Chris Gallo. Pretty much I'm a, typically a landscape painter, uh, but tonight I'm actually going to do something that's uh, architectural, uh, some buildings and a landscape. Um, and uh, the way in which I work, kind of the uh, what I call the process to get from a blank canvas to a finished product <coughs> is uh, very much so that it's a process. And I mean, I've already been talking to some people already, and they're kind of, you know, obviously enthralled and interested in the process that I partake in. I'm not saying it's the right way or the only way to paint. First, when I'm painting, I try to do what logically makes sense to me in my brain. And the reason I'm telling you that is because lots of people get really wrapped up and tied up. And uh, this is, I'm sure it'll possibly happen tonight. I don't know, but you know, I mean, certainly you can just do my workshops and you go, what color are you using now? What color are you using now? I like, well, you know what, it doesn't always work that way. I always think in terms of tonality, you know, different manufacturers have different names for a pigment that does the exact same thing that another manufacturer so don't get so wrapped up in that, get more wrapped up and try to walk away from this session in terms of the big messages. And some of the big messages I'm going to try to give you are things like work, uh, breaking things down to uh, simpler shapes, uh, you know, making a simple statement. I'm working from a photograph up here <coughs> that's got a lot of stuff going on in it and frankly I'm going to eliminate a lot of the stuff and try to simplify it, okay, into its basic shapes. And, you know, that's big piece up there is one of mine and you know if you go out to Stampede Ranch next to the Highland River I mean it's a pretty complicated scene I mean, you got to kind of break it down and simplify it in fact the whole foreground in that <coughs> had been reworked after I did it reworked the whole foreground okay so getting into it I've got a photo up here like I said I'm gonna start drawing the composition um, and I kind of block it in this is an architectural rendering that's rendering. got some buildings in it and stuff, so I'll start with this small brush just to get some basic shapes down. And Something that I do, <coughs> that hopefully a lot of artists do, and I would suggest it, it really does work. People kind of go, oh my god, blank canvas, it's big, what do I do? How do I start the drawing? Where do I start? You just, yeah, I guess sometimes you get people who are, oh, I'm doing buildings. <laughs> Good luck with that. I try to establish some big lines first, and the biggest lines, like, you know, it might be the horizon, I might establish where the horizon's going to go, or something like in that piece, and work from there. This one here's got some big shapes and big lines in it, and I'm just going to try to kind of, kind of guesstimate where I want to put them in just to start. You know, I've already got an idea of what I'm trying to say here, and I'm already starting to work it out. And I'm not too fussy. I tend to be a pretty, you know, predominantly loose painter. I'm not going to get too hung up on how tight and exacting things are, because, you know, A, that's just not my style. I think I probably would quit painting tomorrow if I was doing that. And, um, you know, this is just the, just the start of it. So I'm just going to establish basic, basic shapes right now. And, you know, I'm going to be blocking in my largest, my largest shapes and uh, the overall composition. And it just helps me get the job done faster. I don't get too hung up on making a literal translation of the photo. Um, again, you gotta simplify. You gotta, you gotta break it down and make it work for you, right? See already here, I kind of, um, <clears throat> you know, I was just establishing a line there where something was probably gonna be. I'm not hung up on it. Um, I'm not trying to tell a big whopper, but um, I do need to make the painting entertaining and I'm going to accentuate this reflection when I'm doing this sort of thing and I'm establishing the painting. This is where I spend honestly on a painting probably 60% of my time. You know I gotta know that this painting is established and, and what I'm trying to paint is making in my mind is making sense. It has the illusion of color because of that yellow next to dark so it's the tonality that's creating the illusion of more color than you th your mind's thinking that there is there. There's actually houses and stuff here, but I'm just feeling I need to change this so that it works better. Okay, now I'm going to start to um, just block in some darks. And this is where I got my establish my darkest darks. I also like to get rid of as much white canvas as quickly as possible because 
you know, not only do I feel like I'm accomplishing something, <laughs> but, you know, it kind of gets rid of that white glaring canvas that's staring back at you and you're going, uh-oh, what am I, I going to do now? I use the photo more to inspire the idea for a painting than to get so hung up as to think that I need to replicate the photo. A painting's a poetic statement. It's, uh, I'm a fast painter typically. Um, especially if you're outside, quite often you might be painting fast, weather's changing, light's changing. And I would hope that people are more enamored and caught up in capturing of the spirit of the day or the moment. I remember going salmon fishing with my brother one time back in Ontario and uh, the weather was a certain way and I did this painting and he saw it and he said, oh my guys, you captured the day. I, you know, I know exactly what you're saying with that painting. So it's more of, you know, you want to make a statement of what what the day was saying to you or what the scene says. You know, I want to capture, I want to capture a light source kind of hitting this boat, probably uh, at the edge of this boat. I'm thinking I want to capture some real bold light hitting certain objects here against this dark shape. I'm going to let the underpainting here show through quite a bit because it's going to be A, entertaining, and B, it's going to kind of look like a variegated hill with, I don't know, growth of uh, vegetation on it and stuff. I'm thinking in my brain also that I want to have this hill kind of relatively dark against these grooves and that it's going to be kind of thinking light in color. Because I'm just, see, just want to, that's kind of, I don't want a whole lot of attention to this area. It's just a basic shape. It's kind of a hill with vegetation on it. So I'm, of course, you probably, most of you are painters that have been painting probably for a little while. I'm just doing this negative space thing where I'm painting around shapes rather than painting the shapes themselves. You'll get a lot more mileage doing that and it'll look a lot more entertaining rather than you getting hung up on painting the actual shape. Am I really worried about what color this is going to be? Not really. I know it's water, probably blue. Um, lots of times when I, if I've got an area that I want to as I said before, make it entertaining. I will mix up a black, like I just took alizarin and dioxin purple and um, phthalo green. And I've got a real nice rich black going on here. I'll actually go in and I'll kind of... Yeah. 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 Yeah.